So obviously this series is about time. But it's not about managing time. This is not a time management class. Even though if you're always late to something, you need to take that class. Okay? If you don't understand how to steward time, you need to go to a class because you'll never be able to gain or reach what we're teaching in this three-part series called Aligning Times. Okay? You're going to have to get time under control in your life. This is why I'm always early and never on time because I don't want time telling me, nor do I want to serve time. So I'm always there 10 or 15 minutes before. And my staff knows this, whether they're there on time or not, or whether they think they ought to be at the meeting or not. You were told to be there. Are you listening? So I, I'm going to show you this because you'll never reach what, I'm, I'm good, what, what, what the Lord wants us to achieve in this three-part series without dealing with the basics the basic parts of time. I want to start by, uh, by telling you something I've read recently. Uh, it was about Ferrari, the company that builds those Ferraris. Wow. Did you know that there's a three-year waiting list to get a Ferrari? And that they make sure that every car that comes off the assembly line, that the profit margin is already built into it of $127,000. Now, the truth is... Ferrari builds less than 20,000 units every year, and they do that on purpose because what happens is uh, uh, the manufacturer, Ferrari, they want to make sure that when that car leaves the showroom, leaves the assembly line, that you just got you a prized possession that's going to go up in value as the year goes on. In fact, you're going to, a person's going to spend more money buying a used Ferrari than they will a brand new one. It's a, an investment. Okay? Now, in comparison, it would take selling 27 Teslas to reach that profit margin. In comparison, it would take almost 100 Fords to reach that profit margin. Over a hundred Chevrolets to reach that profit margin. You see, those companies are all about quantity. Ferraris about quality. When I look across this audience today, I see Ferrari Christians. You are on the assembly line here at Path Point Fellowship Church, and God has called you here to be on this assembly line. And as every Sunday goes by, he's putting another valuable component into your spirit, man, into your soul, into your mind, into your thinking. Why? Because to him, it's not about quantity. It's about quality. Amen. So turn to your neighbor and said, honey, you look good as a Ferrari. Amen. That's some good expensive stuff now. Now, if the Lord's laid it on your heart to buy me a Ferrari, well, go ahead and obey him. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to say no, trust me. <laughs> In this series, there's some things I want to say to you that I've never said before. So even as I say them, even as they come out of my mouth, I won't necessarily know and understand everything I just said. Some of it I will. But here's what I've learned. Unrenewed minds don't understand renewed thinking. Unrenewed minds don't understand renewed thinking. But here's what I do know. When Isaiah prophesied, he said, your ways and thoughts... God's ways and thoughts are higher than your ways and thoughts. As high as the heavens are from the earth, so are God's ways and thoughts higher than your thoughts. He didn't say that to you. Because the truth is, you've been renewing your thought life for weeks, months, years, decades. 
He said that to people that are not renewing their minds. So when I say these things in this series, you're, you're, you're going to grasp them. You're going to reach for them. Your spirit man, even your soul, is going to find itself attached to these statements. Okay? When that happens, you're, you're shedding the being conformed to this world, and you're finding yourself being renewed. I want you to see that that's happening not only in your thought life, but as this transformation takes place here, it's taking place in your physical body. You've heard us say, uh, because we pray this over you quite often, right place. What would be at the right place? You have to be there at the right time. Don't you? Isn't that right? You ever been driving, you get to a four-way stop, and, and uh, simultaneously three other call, cars, all of you going different directions, show up at the same nanosecond as you did, and it's confusing because you don't know who to go first. Huh? Timing. It's about time. So you start making gestures like, okay, you go. Okay? Now, you've also seen and heard this. Someone gets in a car wreck and they go, you know, if I'd have just been there a split second earlier or a, a second later, it never would have happened. Wrong place. This series is about time. It's about time. When Scripture speaks of time, it uses two Greek words. Some of you have heard these two Greek words, and you've heard a, a, a small teaching on this. Don't dismiss yourself from the conversation just because you think you know this much about it. The Greek word chronos, which is linear, speaks of time in a linear fashion. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, Decades, centuries, chronos. When someone uses the phrase, I ran out of time. I just don't have enough hours in the day. Chronos. Okay? But there's also a second Greek word in referring to time. It's called kairos. Kairos is speaking of events, experiences. You getting this? Encounters, moments. So, I want to show you throughout this series that Kronos does not exist in heaven. And that you're a timeless being living within time. It will not always be that way. So get used to it. Are you listening? Get used to it here. And I know this is going to challenge some of you. But the way you do that is quit, is quit serving Kronos. And start looking to Kairos. From one event to the next experience to the next moment, supernatural, to the next event to the next experience, to the next moment. See, I've been living my life this way for years because I was raised a preacher's kid. We lived from Sunday to Wednesday, from Wednesday to Sunday. That's how we lived our lives. From one Kairos event to the next. Amen. So when Scripture says in the book of Acts, when the fullness of time had come, he wasn't talking about Kronos. He was talking about Kairos. When the full, this is why we don't understand Scripture when it comes to time and timing. Because we think of it with the mindset of Kronos when we should be thinking about it at it through the mindset of Kairos. When the fullness of Kairos, one supernatural, one prophetic word creating or producing a Kairos moment after another prophetic word cre creating are manifesting another Kairos event. And a series of that happened like a domino effect. It triggered the Holy Spirit coming to the earth. 
when you read that in Scripture, when the fullness of time had come, he's talking about Kairos events. Those prophetic words finally manifested in a Kairos moment. And it triggered the next Kairos event. The Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit, was a huge Kairos experience and event, wasn't it? Amen. So, most people live their lives as servants to Kronos. But can you imagine that God actually created humanity to serve a clock? I have one hanging on that back wall back there, and I never look at it. I don't care what time we get out of here. But every church you go to, I guarantee you they have a clock on the back wall. You know what? As far as that's concerned, it's for the people that work here. They look at that clock. I don't. I could care, I could care less about Kronos. Are you listening? Now, in order to understand this, we have to go back to Genesis, the third chapter. How I many know Genesis is the book of the beginnings? Book of beginnings. So let's go back there. And God said... Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. So God made the sun and the moon to serve humanity, to rule the skies, to be markers for us. And when he got through with that portion of creation, he said, that's good. Now, if time were created by God to be a cruel master to rule over us, he never would have called that good. He never would have called it good. Amen? No. God blessed humanity with a measurement called time. He blessed you with it. Not to you to be, not for us to be subservient to it, to serve it. How I many of you know every time you're late to an appointment and you know what I'm talking about, you feel guilty? Huh? You're serving time. Every time you're supposed to be at a meeting, but you don't make the meeting, guess what? You feel condemnation. You're serving Kronos. Huh? God's intent was never for that, especially when it comes to the Christian. Amen. <laughs> I remember when the Lord started revealing to this, I was already doing this. I was already not serving Kronos, and, uh, but I'd already mastered it from my spiritual father. He taught me to never be late. He taught me always to be there before I was supposed to be there. And so it was easy following, his, following in his footsteps because he, he didn't teach me this, but the Holy Spirit taught me this later on. See, as long as you're there before they say you're supposed to be, you're not serving it. It's serving you because it was because you were waiting on it to come to pass instead of it waiting on you. Who's serving who? I was there before you. See? Huh? Unrenewed minds don't understand renewed thinking. But I want to tell you, the only way that the body of Christ, the church, is going to fulfill its final assignment, and I'm not even going to tell you what that is today because it scares some of you. How is that possible? Is we're going to have to overcome Kronos. Have you noticed? Well, I'm not going to get over that yet. Okay, so let's think about this for just a minute. Look at Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. To everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. God promised you enough time. 
Time doesn't have you. You have time. And you're to start seeing time as your friend, not your enemy. This is especially true as you get older. Especially true that you see time, chronos, a certain way. Huh? Time is a servant to me. It was never intended to rule over me. Well, <laughs> Scott, you know, as I get older, I get more concerned about how much time I have left. Why? God promised you enough time. But so many people judge God unfaithful when it comes to time. And they say things like this. Well, God just took them before their time. That's a lie. The devil took them before their time. The devil comes to kill, not God. God promised you enough time. Fall in love with that. Fall in love with that. Say, I have enough time. I have enough time. See, when you put when you put time, when you put chronos in its place, then you don't let it determine to you how you're supposed to feel at that age. All right, Pastor. For me, 60s are the new 30s. That's right. Yes, sir. You don't let time, you don't let chronos determine how you're supposed to look at that age you're at. And what trend you should wear. I created trend before they ever trended it. <laughs> Are you listening? You don't let chronos dictate to you, well, you're this age, so this is how you're supposed to. <laughs> no, it's not. I said, no, it's not. See, people fall for the thinking of Greek mythology. That Kronos thing is a Greek myth. Are you listening? And they bring it into the church, and they think we're supposed to do what everybody else does. And so we do a bucket. You know, people do a bucket list as if, well, I want to do this before I die. You, you're living according to Kronos. Don't do it. Don't do it. Like I said, so many people judge God unfaithful when it comes to time. But here's the point. God, here this will help you. God never commanded you to manage time. He commanded you to redeem time. Bring up Ephesians 5. See then... That you walk circumspectly. The word circumspectly here means walk carefully, walk cautiously. And then he's going to introduce us to two types of people. Fools, which are unwise, and then the wise. The wise, see, walk cautiously. They walk circumspectly. They walk carefully because they know the days are evil. Amen? Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wise, redeeming the time. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. As if to say, wise men and women, they understand what the will of the Lord is. You have a great advantage being here at Path Point because dozens of times a year God gives us prophetic words. Dozens, dozens of prophetic words every, every year. What is he doing? He's placing a prophetic word there. That prophetic word is actually a kairos moment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in that kairos moment, he wants you to understand this is what this week is supposed to look like whether it looks like this or not. He gave you a prophetic word for your week. 
But see, if you're too busy going, yeah, but I got to be in line at Furs at 12, then Kronos just talked you out of Kairos. This is what happens all the time to good Christians. They miss the Kairos moment because they're too busy serving Kronos. Because we were taught to be subservient to Kronos. But no, I want to understand what the will of the Lord is for today, for this week. The Holy Spirit comes along and gives us a prophetic word in that Kairos moment. Why did he give it to us? To redeem the time. How do we redeem the time? Because we're not going to let time that week look like what we thought it was going to. It's going to look just like the prophetic word. Are you listening? Now, this tells you something because God's giving you a heads up. Prophetic words are coming. They haven't just come. You can go back and read this year's prophetic word. Sometimes I do all the heavy lifting for you, but the Lord's, the Holy Spirit's saying to you, you're going to need to do some lifting here. Turn your focus to Kairos. Turn it away from Kronos. And you'll find yourself Kronos serving you instead of you being a whip dog to it. Lap dog to it. Amen. Understand what the will of the Lord. And don't be drunk with wine by drinking too much. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Look at him. Introduce the Holy Spirit to us. He said, you can't do any of this without being in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Huh? Only the Holy Spirit can lead you to understand what the will of the Lord is for today, for this week, for this month specifically. You mean during June when it's Pride Month? Huh? Hold on, Juneteenth. My son uh, Zachary said this. Juneteenth, for all you uh, black believers, they gave you one day, but they gave LBGTQ a month? That seems a little unfair. It's a lying system. And you got to break it starting with time. The Lord will give you, give us a prophetic word and he'll show us. Amen. You heard me say probably the last time I was up here, th- this guy was wearing certain colors and things like that at the gym. And I said, why are you, so, you, you Christian, right? He said, well, you know I am. I said, well, that's why I asked. I knew you were. And why are you celebrating that? You're a Christian. Why are you celebrating that? See, unrenewed thinking. No one's told them. So we sat there and had a class. By the time I was done, he pulled, put his arms out like this. He had on tank. He put his arms out like this. He and he goes like this. Goosebumps all over him. He's weeping. Nobody told him the truth. I'm going to tell you, but there's anointing in the truth. If you just tell the truth, don't be mean-spirited about it, but just tell the truth. There's an anointing on that will break that yoke. It will break that lie. Amen. What did happen? What, did, what happened? It redeemed the time. It brought time into alignment. You and I have been called to redeem the time, not manage it. Redeem it. Now, let's look at this word redeem. Let's look at the definition of it. By ransom to avert evil from oneself. To deliver oneself from evil, the redemption, the idea is the redemption of a kidnapped child. Isn't that what Jesus did through his death, burial, and resurrection? There through that cross, Kairos event. He ransomed you from the kidnapper Satan. He paid the ransom note. He delivered you from and set you free from the evil one. And then what did he say? Then he said, now you keep yourself free from the evil one. He said, I did it. 
I paid the ransom note. The ransom note doesn't need to be paid again. That hacker has been paid. And now, I've, you've, I've set you free from that evil one. Now, you keep yourself free from that evil one. Because he'll try to kidnap you again. And say, pay me the ransom again. Hold on, no, Jesus already paid for that ransom. Amen? Keep yourself from worry. You can't redeem time worrying. You can't redeem time in fear. You can't redeem time offended. No, no, no. You're serving the the kidnapper. Huh? You can't you you can't you can't serve temptation whether that be a drug or whether that be pornography, whatever that is, you're giving in to the kidnapper. Hold on, he delivered you one time. He expects you now to keep yourself free from that. See how this totally undermines the false teaching of grace? Grace empowers you to stay free from the evil one, from that kidnapper. You have the power to do it because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every condemning tongue that rises up against you will show to be in the wrong. For this is the heritage of the servants of God and my righteousness is of you, Lord. Stay free. Stay free from anxiety. There's no, that's an oxymoron. An anxious Christian? Huh? A panicky Christian? A doubting Christian? Even though your name's not Thomas? Huh? No, redeem time. Every time you resist that evil, you just redeem time. Every time you resisted worry, you just redeemed time. Every time you went to the the temptation was click it, click it, and look at it. Click it, and you go, nope, you just redeemed time. Come on. Say, come on, preacher. Preach this now. Amen. Now, whatever it is you're dealing with, because we all have weaknesses and we all get to deal with something, you're no different than the rest of us. Then whatever that is, that is the thing that you've got to redeem time in that area. Somebody give the Lord praise in this house. (laughs) Now, let's go on. In Greek mythology, Kronos is the god of time. It's where we get our image, the Grim Reaper. Kronos, the God of time, is the devourer of humanity. It's where we get our thinking, I don't have enough time. Hold on, God said you did. I don't have enough hours in the day. God said, yeah, you did. You sure did. I know a man who used to say this all the time. He said, my day is full. So that's why I spend the first three hours of it in prayer. Kairos. Kairos. He would put Kairos before Kronos. In fact, he would use Kronos so that Kairos would manifest in his life. Praise God. That's a revelation right there. Hallelujah. Do you see this? Now, what does this look like? So let me just build on this because we know Kairos is not just, you know, um, we could keep it in a basic format to where, you know, Kairos is this event where a kid graduates from high school or graduates from college. What does that look like? 
you know, when that kid, their parents buy them their first car. It's kind of like time stands still. You're in this, you're the, you're in this time bubble, and everything stands still. Oh, the world's still spinning as fast as it ever has. But inside of what you're experiencing, it's like all you can think about is that new car mom and dad bought you, huh? Or how about when that kid grown they grow up and they get engaged and they get married and they buy their first house? All these are could be compared to basic Kairos events, okay? When they have that first child, second child, eh, third child, okay. Or that first one. I'm just messing with you. If you're the second or third child, I totally apologize. Hey, I was the fourth one. I, Missy was the seventh one. You talk about perfection. The number for perfection. I'm still serving that perfection spirit every day. Willingly, which is why we've been together 40 years. Give the Lord praise in the house. The Bible says in last days there will be a great falling away. He's not talking to the unbeliever. He's talking to Christians. He's saying Christians are going to fall away. This is why more than ever, you better know the faithful. Man, I didn't mean to go there. Hallelujah. But it's truth. That truth has an anointing on it. Walk circumspectly, cautiously, carefully. Make sure it was the Holy Spirit that had you choose that spiritual leader. Don't just go by the outward appearance of a man or just because 100,000 people are following him. Huh? Don't do it. Because most of the time, the, the more the people follow the more they're wrong. Same is true. You find this to be true. The loudest person in the room is probably the person that knows the least. The smartest the person in the room is usually the one that says the least. Amen. Pay attention. Walk carefully. Walk circumspectly. Walk cautiously. Because the days are evil. Amen. So we got we we bought over into Kronos. And so what I want to show you is the difference between Kronos and Kairos. We don't want our life to be busy. We want our life to be full. We want our life to be full of family. And rightly so. That's Kairos. We want our life to be full of kingdom family. That's Kairos. We want any any time this exchange that's happening today. Even before you came in here, when out there in the foyer, out there in the parking lot and you're talking, that's a Kairos moment. Anytime you go to lunch with one another, anytime that there's an exchange of words and you have an understanding that your words have an anointing on them, a grace on them, God's goodness on them, you need to know that's a Kairos moment. That's a Kairos event that's taking place right there. Amen. Our lives should be full of signs and wonders and the miraculous. It should be full of the blessings that we testify to others about. And when they hear that, that's a Kairos. Because they say, well, you know what? I got blessed too. You know what? The miraculous manifested in my life too. Look at that. Look, this week the Lord healed me too. See, and if he can heal me, I know he can heal you. And in that moment of laying hands on that person, he could just be on their shoulder, grab their arm, whatever that is. That's a Kairos moment. Live from Kairos moment to Kairos moment. Amen. Um, I, you remember this. How, how many years we've been doing covered? Okay. So 24 years, or 14 years, so 14 years or, or about, 
So I remember about four or five years ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to brand Covered 91. I want you to brand it the Psalm 91 experience. And I didn't question him. I said, I like it. Well, he used that. Several weeks later, he said, I want you to quit calling your Sunday services, and I want you to call your Sunday experience. A Sunday experience. I said, I like that. And I came in and both times I told the staff. A couple of days later, he said to me, I'm praying in the spirit. I've been praying for a while. I'm praying Kairos. And I've been praying in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, do you want to know why I told you to change that to experience? I said, well, I never thought about it. I'm just going to do what you tell me to do. See, because that's what my relationship with the Holy Spirit has been like for years. I don't ask why, I just do it. He said, well, now, Scott, your relationship with me is now that you qualify to ask me any why, any time. I said, okay, well, why? (laughs) He said, because Sunday service is serving Kronos, but Sunday experience is Kairos. And see, we didn't even know it. But notice how it changed it. See, this means something to God. It means something to Him. Amen. Start seeing time as your friend, not your enemy. You'll live your life differently if you do. And you'll feel differently. And if you'll do that, you can start the clock on Kronos. And a couple of weeks later, you'll start looking better too when you look at yourself in the mirror. It'll happen. Huh? Amen. Start seeing time no longer as a cruel master ruling over you, but time as a servant serving you. Amen. Renew your thinking towards time. Think. Amen. And then believe. Think. Renew your thoughts. And then believe. Renew your thoughts to it, then believe. Now, let's move on. So, notice I looked at Kronos. Now, you, every time I do that, you'll go, Kronos. You'll think it. You may not say it. But see how many times we do this a day? Huh? Now, In Joshua, and also this is recorded in other books, but Jewish history teaches us that Joshua took the leadership position over the nation of Israel. He he received it by inheritance from his predecessor, Moses. These are big shoes to fill. Moses never took God's people over, not because of Moses. It wasn't his issue. Never took them over into the promised land, but because of the people and their unbelief, their thinking. But now Joshua's had this opportunity. It wasn't, it was a short period of time. He was able to take God's people, the Israelites, over into the promised land. Now their battle in the desert is completely different than their struggles in the promised land. Okay? So here they are, and Joshua has broken out these into tribes, and there's a, there's a group of people called the Gibeonites, and there they are, and they're living in a certain area of the promised land. And five kings, enemy kings, rise up and go to war against the Gibeonites. And so they send out a stress call to Joshua, and he sends the Israeli army over there, and within a few Hours during this day, he destroys, they're able to destroy two of these enemy kings and their soldiers. But Joshua looks up at the sky and he says, I'm not going to be able to defeat all of these by the end of the day. So he stops and he has a Kairos moment. And he prays right there in front of all the Israelites. 
And here's what he prays. Let's, let's read it. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. Do you see what happened? Joshua aligned time to God's purpose. Here's what I want you to see. Joshua asked God for more chronos time in the day so God's kairos purposes would be fulfilled. Think about it. How will you use chronos? Will you use it so that kairos, God's kairos purposes will be fulfilled? Living from one kairos event to the next, to the next, to the next. Amen. You need to be bold and courageous and make the declaration, God's purposes in my life will be fulfilled. In your 60s, in your 70s, in your 80s, you better declare it. If I'm not dead, God's not done. Not I'm not done, God's not done. If I'm not dead, God's not done. There's a reason we sing these songs. See, people who are governed by Kronos say, you reach a certain age, you retire, you go to the sidelines, and you let life pass you by, and you wait for the Grim Reaper. Huh? Don't you believe that trash? Every person in the hall of faith their last days were their best days. Their last days are your best. Now, your last days may look different than your previous days. Doesn't mean you have to just stay out there doing the same thing you've been doing. But you never go to the sideline. You never go to the bleachers. Amen. In, in Matthew, let's bring this up. Matthew, can any of one of, one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? So worrying takes your time out of alignment with God's purposes for your life. You go to worrying, time will be broken in regard to alignment to God's purposes for your life. You get anxious. See, even back 2,000 years ago when this was written, people were, had anxiety even back then, but they didn't have the meds to compensate for it. And so Jesus says, he's saying this to a group of people who he knows are worry warts. Huh? He says, don't get all, don't get all anxious and full of anxiety and worry because can, will, that hour, will that worrying add one minute to your life? No. No. So don't do it. What does that tell us? Worrying breaks alignment to God's purpose for, for our life. Six verses later, what does he say to do instead? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added to you, even time. Even days. Even months. Even years. Remember, Hezekiah was dying. And the Lord said to him in a prophetic word, he said, yeah, you're going to die. That's, that's one day I don't want to go to church. When the preacher says, yeah, you're going to die. And the Bible says Hezekiah, the king Hezekiah, humbled himself. Prayed to God, give me more time. And God gave him 15 more years. Told him through the prophet, said, yeah, I'm going to give you 15 more years because you humbled yourself. See, Kairos, humble, anytime you humble yourself, Instead of doing what your flesh wants you to do, anytime you humble yourself, that's always kairos. And then he asked the Lord, that's kairos. And the Lord gave him the manifestation 
of that Kairos moment. Every time we pray, we prayed for Troy earlier. That was a Kairos event. When we praised and worshiped today, Kairos moment. Amen. Important that we understand this. Hallelujah. In John 15, Jesus said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Abiding in him is aligning time. Living in his words and his words living in you is abiding time. Is a, is, is a aligning time. Amen. That's when we use chronos so that kairos can manifest in our life. I'm aligning time. How? I'm redeeming it. Now, what the devil wants me to use time for is to worry. What the devil wants me to use time for is to be fearful. What the devil wants me to use time for is gossip. But I can redeem time and say no to the kidnapper. Negative words can come out of my mouth and I'm giving in to the kidnapper. But if I hold my tongue and I say, no, only right things, good things are going to come out of my mouth. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. What did I just do? I redeemed time. Well, you just don't understand what kind of problems I've had this week. Yes, I do understand. We all have problems all the time. I know you think we're all in this holy bubble. We ain't got there yet. We ain't got there yet. Amen. We're all fighting the good fight of faith. It's just some of us know how to fight better than others. And what we're teaching you here, Ferrari Christian, is how to fight against the kidnapper who wants to lie to you and have you pay the ransom again. You're not qualified, but you are qualified with his power to keep yourself from evil. You're qualified to do that. Amen. Now, I'm going to throw one more at you. Forget Kronos. I've looked more at that clock today than I ever had. That's what happened when you start talking about it. Huh? How can I take Kronos and turn it into a Kairos manifestation? This is what we're going to be talking about in part throughout this series. I can certainly do that with prayer. huh? I can certainly do that uh, with SOSI, School of Spiritual Empowerment. I can certainly do this in the Sunday event. You know how many people are not here today because they're out serving Kronos because Kronos equals a buck? You know how many people are not in church today because Kronos equals a dollar? They're serving the Grim Reaper, the God of time. Like Elon Musk said, time is the only currency. It's the only currency. Amen. But now you take your giving. Huh? You can take Malachi, the third chapter. Bring all the 10% into the storehouse that there may be resources in my house. And see, God says, if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you cannot contain, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. You will become a delightsome land. This is the promise I give those who bring the 10% to my house. And what is that 10%? That 10% is and represents Kronos. I took the 10% of my time that they give me money for because I gave that time to them and worked for them. They in turn pay me with dollar currency and then I turn and I give it to the house. Now I've taken Kronos and I've turned it into a Kairos manifestation. That, that's why he wants you to give. He wants you to teach Kronos a lesson. I do not serve you. You serve me. 
I serve the God of Kairos. Amen. Why do you think he speaks about the second coming in Scripture? And then he says, no man knows the chronos our day. But a believer will know when that Kairos event is going to happen because they've been living from one Kairos event experience and moment to the next. I guarantee you will know. That's why I'm teaching you this series. So you get over into a routine of Kairos experiences. And God will speak to you. He'll let you know what's coming before it happens. Did you get anything out of this today? Give the Lord praise in this house. Look at this next step. Say it with me. No more FOMO. No more worrying. I choose to live in the moment. His words live in me as I abide in Jesus. This validates that I'm a timeless being. (laughs) Hallelujah. Go ahead and stand if you would. If you got healed today, that, you, that is, you got the manifestation, that pain went away in your body, there's a, there's a connect card right there on that seat in front of you. I want you to just fill that out. Just tell me. Tell me what happened to you. This pain left my body, blah, blah, blah. If you have a praise report, if you have a prayer request, please do that. Put that on the connect card. If you're a guest today, if you don't mind filling out a connect card, we have something for you. In fact, if you want to go to the Welcome Center out here, we have a gift for you specifically. We thank you for taking time out of your full schedule to come to Path Point Fellowship Church. Amen. I believe God is up there in heaven doing this. Kairos. 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 Because we're going, to, we're going to show you next week. This is how time is measured in heaven is by Kairos. Kronos doesn't exist there. Amen. And what do we want to do? We want to fulfill the prayer that Jesus prayed. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The best way we can do that is live like heaven on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your faithfulness, first of all, because without you, we cannot be faithful. It would be impossible. We love you. But we love you with the very love you gave us. It is an everlasting love. It is an abounding love. A love that is infinite and unending. And we thank you for that love that you've expressed to us today. We sense your presence. Except for your presence, go with us. How shall we be different from any other people of the world? It's your presence on us that marks us as yours. It's what distinguishes us from every other religion. We thank you that your presence is going with us. We thank you for every promise, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We appropriate every blessing, every good and perfect gift. We appropriate it by faith in Jesus' name. And we call it our own. It's mine. That healing is mine. Say that after me. That healing is mine. That miracle is mine. Prosperity is mine. Financial increase is mine. That peace is mine. That joy is mine. I have it now. Hallelujah. We thank you for these things, Father. In the great name of Jesus. Amen.
You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed in everything you put your hand to. Expect Kronos to serve you this week and watch one Kairos experience after another manifest in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This week, point someone to the path. You're dismissed.